It's the middle game of the Rough Riders series against the Northwest Arkansas Naturals, and to here to recap the week that was with me is manager Steve Bouchelle. And uh, Steve, why don't we start with last night? What a ball game these two teams played. Uh, you score <clears throat> seven runs in the ninth inning to win it, ten to seven, the final score. So much to to go into about last night. What is your ultimate takeaway? What do you look back on with that game and uh, try and take into the next one? I think the ultimate takeaway is the guys is fighting, scoring a couple in the eighth and then seven in the ninth and never giving up. I think we've shown a tendency when we get down early, especially if it's more than two or three runs, you know, we, we've kind of folded the tent here recently. And last night was really nice to see those guys pull together, fight uh, from the top of the order to the bottom of the order. It, everyone pitched in. It was, it was a remarkable game. So I guess the next question is what changed? What allowed that that – uh, complete transformation to happen there? Was it simply just Adam getting out of the game or was it there an attitude change? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, those guys have shown them they, they have fight in them this year and have been able to come back. But just recently, it's been kind of a dead, <clears throat> lackluster attitude and, and feeling that we get around here. So I think uh, that changed. Everybody was pulling for each other. It was just It was just a nice team effort and Certainly not a game that we would have expected to win. I thought we were playing pretty good up until then, even if we had gotten beat. But it was just nice to see them come together and, and have a chance to, to pull for each other. Seems like in games like that, momentum is such a big thing. And it was going back and forth there, especially in that ninth inning when they loaded the bases to have fields up there. Do you have to tell your guys to try and slow things down mentally and, and not let it get up on them too quickly? It seemed like that was the case for Claudio even in that ninth inning. Yeah, I think you know Claudio pitched good. I mean, a couple of bad hops on the infield, and he probably gets out of that inning unscathed and the game's over early. But, um, you know, I just feel at times the guys tend to make the game harder than it is. And, and we tried to simplify things and just kind of go back to reality and what this game's about and how to play it and, uh, last night just shows what you can do when you do pull together. What's an example of something that you tell the guys mm -hmm. to try and simplify it for them? I know you're trying to dig in what we were having a meeting about yesterday, but uh, you know what? Just handling failure. The game's about failure, and it's, people will tell you that it's a game of failure. And to me, it's not a game of failure. It's, it's a game of handling how you handle the failure. And I think that was kind of... Guys are having a tough time handling, making out, striking out. And I think when you get into those situations, you get frustrated. And then you lose focus about how to play the game the right way. And I think that's what was happening. When I talked to you after the game, you were pretty hard on yourself, the way that some of the decisions you made over there at third base. What were some of the challenges that, that you faced there? And did you uh, forgive yourself at all? Oh, I forgave myself. It's, that was an easy game for me to second guess the moves I make, you know, especially sending runners. Sending Nicholas with two outs. I probably would do it again, but looking back, it was, you know, as soon as I sent him, uh, I knew it was the wrong decision. And then I holding up tail late in the game uh, with one out almost cost, well, it did end up costing us a run with, with the base running mistakes that we made there. But, you know, holding him up, I thought if he the throw was online and a good one, he would have been out. And he probably would have been out, but he dropped the ball. So you kind of always look back and, and second guess yourself. But no, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm okay today. <laughs> Were you a little surprised the way the team played coming back after the All-Star break? Normally that's a time for guys to refresh themselves, become a little bit rejuvenated, but it almost seemed like those games in Little Rock, it looked like the team was going into an All-Star break and needed that break. Well, just so that people know, <clears throat> the All-Star break did nothing to rejuvenate anybody. I mean, there, it's two days off and one day of travel from Dallas to Little Rock and you're playing a game that night. So it's basically an off day, so there was no rejuvenation for those players. And getting into Little Rock, I thought it was probably even the worst situation because they traveled that day, and uh, we traveled from here in Northwest down to Little Rock, so everybody was a little bit tired. So I didn't expect anybody to be refreshed at that point. But um, <clears throat> I guess just the mindset of it's the halfway point or you're, you're beyond the halfway point sometimes rejuvenates people or re will rejuvenate a team. Uh, I didn't feel like we were playing that great before. You know, it was still kind of that lackluster attitude that was going on. So uh, we'll, we'll move on from here. As a manager, do you try and build in a few more off days than maybe you did in the first two months of the season to make sure that guys uh, do get a chance to have a day off? Yeah, I think we'll pick, pick, pick the time. You know, right now we're kind of limited on players, especially the roster. I have one extra position player along with the catcher, so it's tough to give guys days off. They're going to get worn out. 
But given the chance, yeah, we can we can take the workload off them during the day too. No early work or skip BP every now and then as the weather heats up. But we'll do the best we can to keep them fresh. A change at the back end of your bullpen again. Last week it was Ben Rowan going up to AAA. This week it's Wilmer Font going up. You get Lisa Alberto <clears throat> Bonilla down from Round Rock. Uh, Wilmer, you know, you had him since last August of last year. He had his ups and his downs, but uh, ultimately not too many teams got hits or scored against him. Yeah, I would say he started the year off slowly. Probably not the same Wilmer we saw last year where he could dominate a game, but recently I would say in the last month, I don't know how many appearances, he's come out firing. He's been the Wilmer of old, and I think everyone's recognized that, and he deserves that chance to go up and do it in AAA. So we saw it last night, but is Randy Henry the go-to guy at the end of the game, or is that still to be determined? Uh, still to be determined. We're going to try to set a record for how many guys we can get saves out of. I think we're at nine or something like that. But, no, Randy did a good job. <clears throat> I feel confident in putting anybody in that role for, for the most part. I think uh, you don't have a defined closer, maybe Justin Miller, Randy Henry, Richard Blyer. I'll, I would be willing to give it to anybody. I want to ask you about one of your former players that you had for a few years who made his major league debut this week, got his first big league hit and his first at-bat uh, in a city that he has spent significant time in New York, and that's Angel Beltre, a, a guy that I think you saw just about everything from the low to the high with Angel, and uh, you must be happy for him to see him have that success. No, really happy for him. Just the transformation he's made over the last couple of years has just been really nice to see. It's this case of grow, a kid growing up and maturing and understanding what he needs to do to make it to the big leagues. And you saw a different angel last year with the team that we had. And uh, obviously this year was having a wonderful year in Round Rock, and he's well deserving of that chance. Very happy for him. And you probably think he's a big leaguer in terms of going on out. Uh, you know, Obviously he's the end of his options, but uh, in terms of his skill set, he's a guy that can probably stick in the big leagues. He'll stick with somebody if it's not the Rangers. Yeah, I mean, the guy can play defense. You know, he's swinging the bat much better than he has in years past. He's becoming a little more disciplined. Uh, his speed's de a definite weapon. Uh, he can do things. He's, he's a very gifted player, and he can help somebody. Uh, finally, we talked a little bit about the All-Star game, but uh, let's talk about the game itself, managing it. You had the opportunity, along with Jeff and Jason, to be a part of it. Uh, was it fun, in spite of maybe taking away some of that restfulness that the All-Star break would allegedly provide? I wish every game was like that. I did nothing. I put the lineup up, and the guys knew who was coming in late in the game. I didn't keep score. And I went out at third base and didn't give any signs. I let the guys play. It was, it, was, it was a blast for me. I think Jeff probably had a little more stress put on him to get the pitchers through, but they all made it easy on him. They threw great. Uh, it, was, it was a blast. It always feels a little better, a bit better when uh, you get the win and you see somebody else get the Gatorade shower at the end. Yeah, it was a nice, quick game. I mean, it was, it was a perfect game. The guys played great. It was fun. Well, Boo, congratulations on uh, the team's comeback win last night and, of course, your all-star victory. Thanks so much for the time. You got it. Thanks. That's Steve Bouchelle. We're back after this here on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.